Hi everybody, Lori here for Pink Fresh Studio. Thank you so much for joining me today. I've got a fun project to share with you featuring the new With Love stamp stencil and die set that just came out in the April release. So here are these uh, With Love products, the stamp set. I love how the back of the packaging shows you what they look like. And then there's the coordinating die set and then as well, the coordinating stencil set that allows you to effortlessly color in your images if you choose to do so. One thing that's unique about the stamp set is that is one big stamp. So the three, there's like two blooms and one kind of a leafy image. It's one big stamp. There's no lining anything up or guessing. And I'm gonna stamp this on a panel of white cardstock. I'm using Hammer Mill. I'm using Misty Coast Pink Fresh Studio ink for a very light um, impression. I'm gonna use the coordinating stencils. So I just wanted a little bit of a guide to where I'm supposed to line, th line things up, but I didn't want any harsh lines. You can certainly stamp this with black ink and it looks fabulous like that as well. You could, um, uh, what could you, you can emboss it in gold or silver that would look beautiful too so i'm stamping two panels with that misty coast ink and i'm going to blend blend them up using the coordinating stencil so in the coordinating stencil set there are four stencils and i'm going to get to going and i don't necessarily go in order i just go how i just kind of just go with the flow okay lining up the first one here using some temporary tape to hold it down in place and as usual, I'm starting with Sparkling Rose. I'm telling you, I don't think there's been a Pink Fresh Studio project that I don't start with Sparkling Rose. It's my favorite pink in all the land. Pulling out some of these Pink Fresh Studio detail brushes and blending a little lemon whip on this smaller little floral cluster. So the first stencil is just kind of covering all of the bloom. And then when you lay down the next stencil, you can blend maybe in a darker shade, a more detail. It's like the little detail of the, that same bloom, the pink one and the yellow one. So since I use Sparkling Rose, I pulled out a little bubble gum. Again, I'm using those little detail brushes. They're great for getting in the little nooks and crannies and they feel very nice. I love the packaging, the box. I haven't taken it out of the box because I just like, I like the packaging. I'm not sure, you know, sometimes you could store them in a coffee mug. If you're really working with them a lot, you might not want to be in and out with the box, but I kind of like the little packaging. So there is the first two stencils. Now the next two color in the leaves and that leafy stem. Okay, so I pull out, pull out a little fresh pair. In case I don't mention all the ink colors, I am using all Pink Fresh Studio inks and everything will be linked in the description box in case I forgot to mention it. A lot of times I use a detail brush. Sometimes I pull out bigger ones. I just kind of, you know, go with flow, like I said. Okay, here we have mint. Sometimes I like to do some non-traditional, with this, this kind of reminds me of eucalyptus. I, it's probably not, but you ever had some eucalyptus? I love the smell of eucalyptus. I used to have a huge bouquet of it in my office. And my mom told me if you, uh, if it ever starts to lose its smell, to run it under some bath water, like wash it off and it like refreshes it, which is true. I did that for many years. Um, yeah, so I don't know much about anything to do with having a green thumb, but I do know that you can rinse your eucalyptus, like dried eucalyptus, and it kind of refreshes the smell. Anywho, okay, now I'm on to the fourth stencil, which is adding detail to the leaves. So I did grassy knoll and then, um, well, I think that other one I did, uh, meadow i'm not sure it'll be linked you probably saw it while i was blabbing away about rinsing off eucalyptus how's everybody doing we are in may can you believe it oh my goodness and we got some birthdays coming up we got some big time celebrations on may 9th it's my husband and my oldest son's birthday see my oldest son was born on my husband's birthday not only that it was also at the time mother's day Okay, but so their birthday's on May 9th, but this year Mother's Day falls on, I believe it's the 14th. So maybe, I don't know, usually we have one big shebang. But also, lest I forget, May 12th is Hank the Tank's second birthday. So we got a lot of celebration to do. I asked Hank the other day, what would you like for your birthday? And he said, roof. <laughs> so I think that means 
um, lots of treats and lots of squeaky balls. So we will do that. We will definitely have fun. And then now Bo, I asked him, you know what he asked? Well, he didn't, he doesn't really ask for anything. You know, when you get to be 24, you don't really ask. But I said, what would you like for your birthday? And he said, well, I know what I'd really like is a pizza oven. See, he loves to make pizza. And uh, we've always thought about getting one of those pizza ovens that heats up to like 500 and, um, what, 15 minutes and we could do some pizza. I don't know. We'll see. I'll let you know what happens. And then, of course, dad, he never wants anything. You know how it is when you, you know how it is when you get older, you really don't want anything. But so we'll have some fun celebrating in the next few days. Uh, while I was blabbing away, I'm just blending. I did two panels. So this one here, I'm doing more of corally red tones. The, that leafy green is blue. And I did a little cluster with orange. And then, um, Again, add the detail. This time the green, I did olive for that. And um, yeah, just working my way through the pink, fresh rainbow. We've got some sunny days here in Illinois. The leaves are popping. It's getting blooming. It always reminds me how much I love spring and summer when everything turns green and the color starts happening and the joy starts a flowing. And then now we're right in full bloom with track season. Emma the youngest, she's a runner. I'll tell you, she's a runner. She does a long distance. She does a mile and the 800 and she's trying to do the high jump. I'm not sure. We'll see how that goes. But these trek, can I just tell you the track meets go about four hours long. Okay. So what I got is one of those bleacher seats. Okay. Before I get into the bleacher seat, I'm taking the coordinating die, which by the way, in one shebang, it cuts all three of those images out. Easy peasy lemon squeezy okay so i run that i run that through my die cutting machine off camera and then i'm taking that new little craft pick that pink fresh studio craft pick which is just divine to hold in your hand it's fancy schmancy gonna die cut the second panel and again use that craft pick to pop it all out and get all the innards out and what have you uh okay so yeah my husband got me a bleacher seat several years ago because i'm going to all these sporting events sitting in the bleachers and the old tushy gets a little sore. Okay, now for a little, just to make a little frame, I took one of the nested arches dies and I die cut it into a panel of cream cardstock. I'm gonna pop this up on a white card panel. Okay, that's what you call a neutral on neutral contrast. I love it. And I am gonna just tuck these flowers like nobody's biz. I'm not gonna heavily adhere. Okay, just maybe one foam square per thingamajiggy. Not a lot of adhering. You could do more, but I, I felt like I needed to have it kind of floating up in the air, easy breezy, and uh, that way I could zhuzh it if I feel the need. Okay, so I'm just doing three down the bottom and I'll do three up the top. And this will kind of draw the eye into the center, which where I'm gonna put the sentiment. I do have to do a little bit of surgery. You gotta cut a little bit off here and there so that you can tuck it and it doesn't hang too far off the edge. There's a controversial topic for you. Do you ha like to hang things off the edge of your card? Because if you do, then you gotta have a bigger envelope. And uh, you know, to some people it doesn't matter. And to some, they wanna keep it within the margins. And sometimes I do, and sometimes I don't. Today I'm, I'm keeping it in. Again, adding just a single foam square behind each little leaf and bloom just to make it kind of airy and breezy and but you know to hold it down little dab will do now for the sentiment doing something a little different but i wanted to try these foiled sentiments that came out in the april release there's been a few different versions of these they are foiled pre-foiled pre-trimmed sentiments you get a ton to pick from and they're handy dandy you know when you're in a pinch and you haven't thought about the sentiment you could easily stamp one here in the middle but i love this foiled hooray and i thought it would look nice kind of cocked on an angle there so i put a couple foam squares behind it and then i'm going to just nestle that right in you could also emboss a little sub sentiment to put underneath it but i'm going to keep it really simple now for embellishment I love embellishing Pink Fresh Studio projects. Uh, these are the champagne glitter drops. First of all, the packaging. Second of all, the gold embellishment tray. And third of all, the little fancy dancy wand. 
you just feel like you got your life together. You know what I'm saying? Even though, man, my craft area is about as bad as it's ever been as far as organization. But look at this hooray card. I've got everyone fooled. And it's got a little glimmer, a little shine, lots of color. And uh, you could switch out that sentiment for different occasions. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a wonderful day. And I will see you next time.